Okay, so for this question, we have this matrix M, and we've been asked to find the values of K for which a matrix has an inverse. So if it has an inverse, it means its determinant is not equal to zero. So all we need to do is to find the determinant of this matrix. So we'll have two times the determinant of this matrix, negative one with this matrix, and the one with this one. So we'll multiply the K by the negative one, take away the four times the two. Then we'll have three times negative one, take away the four times the three, and the six, take away the three K. We can simplify each of these, and then we can collect the like terms. So K cannot equal negative five. Then for part B, find in terms of P, the coordinates of a point when these planes intersect. So we can extract these coefficients and set up our matrix equation. So then to find when they intersect, we can move this matrix to the right hand side by finding its inverse, so we get x, y, z. And we can find this inverse on a calculator. So I've entered the matrix, we press catalog, we want matrix and matrix calculations. We'll choose the inverse matrix and we get this matrix here. And I'm going to pull out that division of five. So I'll rewrite this equation. So at this point, I'm going to move this division of five to the left hand side. And then we can multiply the first row by this column. The second row by the column and the third row by the column. So now I can rearrange each of these to find x, y, and z. So in terms of p, neither are the coordinates of intersection where the three planes intersect. Okay, for question C, we've been asked to find the value of q for which we said some simultaneous equations can be solved. So if you notice here that we've got k is negative five, and we said in part A that k cannot equal negative five. So these three planes will not intersect at a single point, but we're told that it can be solved. Then this means that it must intersect on a line. And we can visualize what these three planes would look like. Can you see that the three planes intersect along this line? Now this line will pass through any given x coordinate. So all we need to do is let an x value equal one and then find the y and the z value when it passes through x equals one. So when x equals one, we can substitute that into each of these three equations. Then we'll have three equations with two unknowns, which means we'll be able to find the values of y and z. So we'll label this one equation one, equation two, and equation three. And then we can simplify each of these by moving the constants to the same side. So then we can use equation one and equation three to solve y and z simultaneously on our calculators. So y will equal negative four and z will equal negative five. So then we can substitute y and z into equation two and this will give us a value of q. So we get 20 minus the 20 will equal q minus three. So therefore q is equal to three. And then for the last part of the question, for this value of q, interpret the solution of a set of simultaneous equations geometrically. So we've already mentioned that at q equals three, where three planes will intersect to form a sheaf. Okay? Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find this helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the lessons on this topic from my website, mrmathematics.com.